This video will be a discussion of restricted and unrestricted determinants in Hartree-Fock theory. So starting off, let's define what we mean by restricted and unrestricted. So as we mentioned in our video on spin orbitals, we have spin orbitals which represent both a spatial part and a spin part. So in the spin, we can have either a spin up electron alpha, or we can have a spin down electron beta. And for every spatial orbital, that is some function of x, y, and z, we make a choice of alpha or beta, allowing for two electrons uh, to be inside that spatial orbital, each of them being in different spin orbitals. So in what we would call a restricted determinant, that's where the alpha-beta pairs, the electrons that are in the same spatial, or the electrons that are uh, paired together uh, near that same energy, that those pairs must have the same spatial orbital. So basically, if we think of like a 1s uh, atomic orbital for uh, a helium atom, there's a spin up and a spin down electron. And in restricted Hartree-Fock, or using a restricted determinant, the spatial function for those 1s electrons must be the same. And this would be the same for 1s, 2s, 2px, 2py, 2pz, as you go up the line, that for every pair of electrons, uh, where their spins are matched, they have to be in the same exact spatial orbital. So this is generally most applicable to a system that you would call closed shell, systems where you naturally have pairs of electrons that go together. So most typically when you have an even numbered, uh, when you have an even number of electrons that fully uh, complete a shell. So things like noble gases, but also things like anything that would end in in uh, S2 or P6, D10, so something where the shell is full would be what you call, the highest energy shell is full is what you would call a closed shell. And this is the most common type of calculation we're probably going to see in Hartree-Fock theory because it is the simplest. The math is easier, meaning it's easier to code, it's easier to compute, it's easier to interpret, and it's less susceptible to certain types of errors that occur when this is not the case due to those extra complications. And in the other case, we have what's called an unrestricted determinant, where those alpha-beta pairs can have different spatial orbitals. So for example, 1s alpha and 1s beta in our helium atom, those might be different types of functions. So it's not really such a good example to imagine it in a helium atom because there they probably are paired in, in a matching spin orbital. But what about something like a lithium atom, something that's 1s2, 2s1? So there we have uh, two alpha electrons and one beta electron. So you might imagine this alpha electron interacts differently with this other alpha electron than it does with the beta electron due to how spin interactions work, as we'll see later in this chapter. So in that case, since they interact differently, then the energies of these electrons are probably different. And if their energies are different, that means their orbitals are probably different. So in that case, we would have what you would call an, what you might call an unrestricted determinant, where in order to most accurately reflect the physical situation, we can allow these two spatial orbitals uh, of these paired spins to be different. So it's most most applicable to open shell systems, where there's some physical reason why this is uh, necessary or an improved model for the system. It's less common because we like lots of uh, closed shell, or simple organic molecules where we generally have this type of situation, but a lot of the more interesting cases in chemical systems are these open shell systems, you know, free radicals, metals, catalysts, who knows. And it's more complex, not only in terms of the physical situation, but also the mathematics and the computation involved in order to do that. Um, slightly different set of Hartree-Fock equations that you need to solve in order to get these answers, as we'll see. Okay, so if we're going to label what all these uh, spin orbitals and spatial orbitals, what those look like, so thus far we've been using the labels chi1, chi2, chi3, etc., going up to all the way to chi n minus 1, chi n for a um, system with n electrons. But now if we have a restricted determinant, well, it's sort of redundant to indicate this because chi1 and chi2 have the same spatial orbital. It's just one is spin up and one is spin down. So instead, 
we might use psi1 and psi1 bar indicating that it's um, the, the lowest energy spatial orbital spin up and lowest energy spatial orbital spin down and so on and so on until you get all the way to psi n over 2, psi n over 2 bar for our last electrons or our last pair of electrons. So that's a nice uh, simplification that we can do whenever we have a restricted case is we can indicate spin orbitals using the spatial orbital notation where a bar above it indicates beta and a non-bar indicates alpha. Okay, so in such a case we could have our ground state determinant going from chi1 to chi n as uh, psi1, psi1 bar, psi2, psi2 bar, all the way up to psi n over 2, psi n over 2 bar where if we're being exceptionally lazy, as we often like to be, because there's often lots of things to write down in some quantum chemistry derivation, then we end up with this nomenclature for our determinant uh, for psi naught, our ground state being 1, 1 bar, 2, 2 bar, all the way up to n over 2, n over 2 bar. And often it'll be clear from the context whether we're talking about this type of notation or this type of notation because it would be strange for there to be a system with lots of electrons that didn't have at least uh, some spin down electrons. So generally if you see these types of bars, that's often indicating that you're in a restricted determinant where you're indicating uh, spatial orbital indexing. Okay, so different types of Hartree-Fock that we would use with these different situations. If you use restricted determinants, you are using, unsurprisingly, restricted Hartree-Fock, RHF. If you use unrestricted determinants, you're using unrestricted Hartree-Fock, UHF. And then there's a third variety uh, called restricted open shell Hartree-Fock that I'm not really going to discuss much in this chapter. In fact, I'm not going to discuss, discuss UHF much either. It's going to be primarily RHF that we focus on. But just in case you come across that, in case you come across this acronym uh, in you know reading or, or somewhere, that I'll mention just that that exists and that that's a different thing. Um, restricted open shell is where you do have restricted determinants even though you're in some open shell system and that comes with its own uh, complications, trade-offs, and, and things to consider. So this video is mostly to distinguish between restricted and unrestricted and also indicate that primarily going forward we will be interested in restricted Hartree-Fock.